Welcome to this presentation on creating flowcharts. When you're trying to code a program, especially a really complicated program, it's really helpful to be able to organize your thoughts, organize the process, organize the pattern of how you're going to get the outcome that you want. And flowcharts are an amazing uh, tool for making that happen. So what is a flowchart? Well, it's a schematic. It's a diagram that uses special symbols in place of the actual pictures. In a wiring schematic, for example, a squiggly line is used to represent a resistor, and many of my students are already familiar with that. An algorithm is a series of steps that tell how to complete a task. For example, an algorithm for reducing a mathematical expression could be first perform the operations contained within the parentheses, then calculate the exponent if, if there is one, Next, multiply and divide from left to right. Finally, add and subtract from left to right. That is an example of an algorithm for a process that you're already familiar with. Uh, here we have a simple, a very simple flowchart that might show the steps in feeding a dog. As we look at the parts of a flowchart, note that the different processes have different shapes. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about those different shapes and what they symbolize, what we use them for. So start end. The design process is an iterative process. Iteration is the act of repeating a process either to generate an unbounded sequence of outcomes or with the aim of approaching a desired goal, target, or result. Your flow charts may repeat steps or they may backtrack several steps. We always begin them with the rounded rectangle that represents start. The rectangle is used for the process step. Uh, process is basically uh, the verb. What are we doing, right? What kind of things are we doing, like feeding the dog in that previous example, adding one, turn the motor on, turn the light off, so forth. Input and output. So many times in a program, the user needs to input some data or some values or the program is going to output information to the user or to another computer. So for this, we use a parallelogram. It indicates that a manual operation is needed. And some examples are given there. Next, we have decision. Uh, this shape is a rhombus. Uh, from geometry, you may remember that a rhombus is a quadrilateral with all four sides congruent or equal, right? It is different from a square in that the angles are not all right angles, like a square. Some refer to this block as a diamond because it has been rotated about 45 degrees, uh, whereas most rumbi lie on their bases. So here's where our decisions come. This is where we're going to be asking yes or no questions. And our program, our flowchart, is going to go off in two different directions based on the answers to those questions. And there's some examples there. Arrows. We need to keep track of the direction of the flow, right? And so arrows do that for us. Sometimes there's one arrow. Uh, in case of decisions, there may be two arrows for yes and no. Yes for one direction, no for another. All right, so let's take a look at an example. What we want is a program, a flow chart, for counting from one to nine, but only in odd numbers. So before attempting to draw the flow chart, what do you think the output might be? Also, what is the first block? Well, the output would be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, right? Those are the odd numbers that are between 1 and 9, or including 1 and 9. And the start block is always going to be the first one. So let's start with the start block. All right, very good. So there's our start block. We're off to a great start. What are we going to do next? Well, the program has to begin with the number one. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to put a parallelogram there and input the number one. Next step. Well, it's the process of actually saying that number, right? The computer needs to say that number for us. So we're going to put that as a process of what the computer is going to do next. To move from one to three, we would add two. This is a crucial step because it determines the pattern for the rest of the process. Next, we're going to add a decision block. Do we go on or are we done, right? We need a decision block to determine that. Are we greater than 9 or do we need to keep going? So if you can imagine this, 
we're starting with one it says the, the number one we put input the number one the, the flowchart says the number one then it adds two and we get three is three greater than nine no so we go back and it's going to say that new number, right? This is the number that is now two more. So it's going to say the number three. It's going to add two more. It gives us five. Is that greater than nine? No. So it's going to go back and say the number five. It's going to add two. Is that number greater than nine? No. Now we're at seven. So we'll go back. And we say the number seven. We add two more. And we get to nine. Excellent. Are we greater than 9? No. So it goes back and it says the number 9. And then it adds 2 more. Now we're 11. Are we greater than 9? Yes, we are greater than 9. And when you're greater than 9, then the program comes to an end. And there we go. End. So excellent. So here's an example of our flowchart. Now that you understand how a flowchart works, you understand the different shapes, the different blocks that go into a flowchart, here's what I want you to do. I want you to create a flowchart that shows how to pour a glass of milk. All right, I want you to create this flowchart, put it in your notebook, Think, but you gotta think about it. Don't just start writing this stuff down. You have to think about how this process is gonna work. Um, how is this process the same or different than the two that we've already seen in this video? Does it matter what your start represents? Uh, what sort of assumptions do you make when you create a flowchart like this one? All right. Does it matter if the is the glass already out? Is the milk already out? Are you going to clean the glass at the end? Are you going to drink the glass of milk? Or are you going to put the milk away? All right. So there's all these issues you have to think about when you create your flowchart. All right. So create that flowchart in your notebook and then show that to your instructor. All right, thank you for watching the video.